Hey everyone, good to see you. Thanks for joining me. Today, I'm going to be talking to you about code breakers and code talkers. I like to find books that are not only interesting, but are unusual. And I think that there probably are not a lot of, um, there aren't many people out there who know about the code breakers, the code breakers that I'm going to talk about today or the code talkers. And they really are heroes of America. So let's get started. This is a newer book called Code Girls. And Code Girls is a true story. And you can read the subtitle, it says, The True Story of the American Women Who Secretly Broke Codes in World War II. All right. Um, Liza Mundy is the author. And from what I read about her in the process of writing this book, that she scoured thousands of pieces of material. Okay. So women from uh, around the United States, an elite group of women um, were recruited. They were, did she say about 10,000, more than 10,000 women were recruited and they served as code breakers uh, for the US Army and for the Navy. And they took on this highly demanding top secret work that involved a lot of complex math and linguistics. Um, they ran IBM computers and they read over millions of encrypted um, enemy messages. Uh, their achievements were immense and they cracked a crucial Japanese code, which gave Americans an advantage in the Battle of Midway which changed the course of the war that some of you may know later on. Uh, they also helped create false communications that led to overcoming Germany. Their encryptions allowed um, for careful tracking of the Japanese and um, German armies and their boats and it saved, they saved countless American lives and British lives as well, because we were working with British. So that's a book for you to check out. Here's another book. And the reason why I love this book is by Rashima Sawajuni is that she has a nonprofit organization called Girls Who Code. And um, she has helped, let's see, was it, I remember correctly, um, over 40,000 girls, I think, through her organization. Okay. Girls Who Code, Learn to Code and Change the World. Um, so June, Johnny is the founder of the tech organization, Girls Who Code. It was founded in 2012 and has taught computing skills to, like I said, over 40,000 girls across America. So this book has very dynamic artwork, as you can see from the front cover. It's, it, she gives you um, easy to understand explanations of coding principles. She uses real life stories of girls um, working at places like Pixar, if you love those movies, and at NASA. Uh, it's uh, graphically designed, and you probably get that kind of idea from the front cover. And it shows the importance of computer science and how, but that it can be a lot of fun. Okay. Um, if you're itching to create your own apps and games and robots to help make the world a better place, maybe you can start with this book. The other book on this slide, Crack the Code, Activities, Games, and Puzzles that Reveal the World of Coding, is just that. Um, it's by Sarah Hutt, and 
there are some activities in there that will help you increase your coding abilities, we'll say. Now, um, those, I hope I pronounced her name correctly, um, wrote this book. And this is a series. This is the first book in the series. And Girls Who Code, The Friendship Code, is about um, a girl who wants to join a new coding club that is at school. And her motivation for joining is that she has an uncle who, um, who is very sick and she wants to help him. She thinks that if she comes up with an app that'll make his life better. Um, I think the app is for, yeah, it is it, um, for her, for him to remember when he should be taking his medicine. Um, before she be can begin though, she and her teammates are led on a mystery code based scavenger hunt. I like scavenger hunts, so this book intrigued me right away. Um, in that scavenger hunt, they must decipher in order to learn basic coding skills. And so she learns about loops and variables, input and output. And she also learns that coding and learning to code and being good at it takes time and dedication and a lot of perseverance. Here's a book that I absolutely love because I love, um, I love books about the contributions of Native Americans to our country. Uh, Code Talker. Chester Nez wrote it with um, Judith Scheiss Avila. And let's see. His name wasn't Chester Nez. That was the English name that he was assigned in kindergarten when he was sent to a boarding school at Fort Defiance. Uh, and he was punished for speaking his native language. And the teachers back then tried to get him, tried to rid him of his own culture and his traditions. But that discrimination didn't stop Chester Nez from this, wanting to help the United States. Uh, after Pearl Harbor, he felt very strongly that he should do whatever he could to help our country. Um, during World War II, the Japanese had managed to crack every code that the United States used, but they were never ever able to crack the code created by Chester Nez. Um, because they, he used his native language. And, um, and for that, he was able, because of that, he was able to help the United States immensely um, in getting messages out to people so that they would know what to expect and they could move forward. Here's another book about Chester Nez. Uh, he was born, um, I hope I say the name correctly, Batoli. So he was taken from his reservation to go to a, um, a missionary school. And he knew that he would have to learn to survive in the speaking English world. So he worked very hard, he was a very intelligent man. And um, he was, you, he was um, enlisted in to the Marines, I think. Yeah, he was, he was in the Marines and he used his native language code to again, help our troops and it was never broken, okay? So, it's kind of ironic that when his, in his younger years, he was told not to ever use his language, but it was his language that so helped the United States win the war. Okay. 
And then we had the other book on this page by Sarah Hoagland Hunter, The Unbreakable Code, is um, the story of a young boy who listens to his grandfather, grandfather's stories about how he became a part of the war because they needed boys, they needed people who could speak Navajo. And this, the, the Navajo language remained the only code that the Japanese could not break. So you can see how important uh, this group of people was to our efforts in winning the war. So here are some graphic novels about this, those code talkers. So we have some nonfiction books, we have some graphic novels, and we have um, picture books. And I'm sure you know this, right? Hidden figures, these four women who helped NASA and the astronauts get into space. There's a picture book. Marwa Lee Shetterly wrote this book. There's a picture book about this. And of course, there is a movie, which I hope that you have seen and you enjoy. But for me, the books are always so much better than the movies. Here's another picture book. And if you become extremely interested in code breaking, here's a nonfiction book. And this man spent what countless hours going through all of the recently released documents from World War II. And he wrote this book, Battle of Wits, the complete story of code breaking in World War II. It took him uh, several years to write this book. But if you get good at it and you want more information, try this book, okay? I hope you enjoy all those books. And the cool thing is that on a quick search I did for Overdrive, I found Hidden Figures, the Navajo Code Talkers, the um, Code Girls, and, a, book, and so a series of books that I'm going to talk to you about in a little bit called the Explorer Academy. And they all use coding. I think um, that, well, of course, if you have Overdrive, you can get those books for free, right? You can read them on any device that you have. Um, Overdrive.com, you can read with Libby. And if you need help with that, you need to just reach out to someone, and one of your teachers, or you can reach out to me, and we can help you get Overdrive if you don't already have it. Okay, uh, let's see if there's anything else I wanted to share with you before. Uh, I'm really excited about this. So now we're going to have a little fun. Well, even more fun. Reading books is always fun, especially for me. But National Geographic Kids has a really fun um, game called Crack the Code. You can unlock the secret messages and become a master code breaker. Here is the link for it. Kids.nationalgeographic.com. And if you go there, or if you even if you go to kids.nationalgeographic.com slash games, you'll be able to find this. And we're going to go there now and play this game. I've played it, this will be my fifth time now, and I find some interesting things, and I learn to play it better as I get, get going. But before we play the game, I want to show you about this Explorer Academy book series. There are now four books in this series the Nebula Secret, The Falcon's Feather, The Double Helix, and The Star Dunes. Let's watch a little video about these books. Might get you more interested in reading them and maybe even in coding. My dearest Cruz, if you are reading this, it means I am not with you. And for that, I am deeply sorry. National Geographic presents. You are the only one I can entrust with this difficult mission. A 
book series for young readers. Find my journal. Love, Mom. Explorer Academy. The Academy is no ordinary school. For more than a century, it has trained aspiring adventurers to explore our world and protect its treasures. Now, adventure, danger, and a thrilling global mission await 12-year-old Cruz Coronado as he follows in his mother's footsteps at the Academy. But before he can uncover her legacy, Cruz discovers a startling conspiracy, making him the target of a mysterious organization. Why was he chosen? What really happened to his mother? Who is out to get him and why? It all leads back to Explorer Academy. Look for the Explorer Academy series wherever books are sold. All right. So look for those books. And as I said earlier, you can find them on Overdrive. Let's play some games. This is the game I found that um, this will now be my fifth time, as I said, playing it. And uh, the, the beginning of the game, in the beginning of the game, there's a little practice. And I advise you to read, to do the practice, unless you are so good that you don't need the practice. Uh, but I had to learn how to do this, so I did do the practice. Um, and there are different levels to the game. And every time I went past the practice, I had different words to decode or different messages to decode. So um, we'll see today after my, this is my fifth time if there are new messages for me too. Crack the code. In the book, Explorer Academy, The Nebula Secret, 12-year-old Cruz Coronado breaks secret codes in order to fight dangerous villains and solve mysteries. Play now to test your cipher-breaking skills. Bonus, some of the messages will give you clues about the book. All right, let's get going. So it looks like this. Explorer, Explorer Academy, crack the code. Unlock secret messages. Become a master code breaker. So I'm going to take you through the training, the practice, and then I'll take you through a few codes and we'll move up a couple levels. And then when it gets really hard, I'll do one with you and then I'm going to let you do the rest on your own. All right, so, so let's click on learn how to play. Rotate the inner wheel to align the letter A to the decoder window. So you hover over A, click on it and press and hold and then move the mouse on your mouse pad or if you have touch screen on your chromebook you can just use the screen and your finger to move the a in the decoder window so i have done that and now it wants me to move the letter k to the decoder window notice that there's an inner circle right here and an outer circle it's very important to know those. So the letter K is on the outer circle. I press and hold. And then I, on my mouse, I move, drag it over to the decoder window. So now I have them in the decoder window. And it wants me to press lock so that the two wheels can move together. If you don't lock it, what I found by mistake, and that's okay because we learn sometimes from our mistakes, hopefully, right? If I, when I didn't lock this and I moved the letters, then, then both wheels would move, but they would move in the wrong way. So always make sure you lock it. Okay. Now, the first hint in the code above is the letter J on the bottom row. Align the wheel so the bottom letter J is in the decoder window. Okay, so here's J up here and see the box is flashing. We need to find the match. What letter is J in the code? So we're going to go to J in the inside circle and move it to the window. Okay, so you can see the first letter in the secret code aligns with the letter J. It's the letter T. So the first letter in the code is T. Now press the letter that aligns with U. Here's U, 
and it's the letter E. On the outside circle, I'm going to move E here. Okay, so E is the le next letter in the code. So we have T-E so far in the code. All right, so Q is the next letter in the code. And above Q is the A. So I move A here, A and Q. So A is the next letter. So I have T-E-A, T, drink. And C is in the inside circle. I go to C on the inside circle. And I see M on the outside circle, so I move that in the decoder window. And I press on it. So our first message is T. Now, we want to check to make sure it's right. So we click decode. Great job. You've cracked the code. Let's try another one, okay? Remember to rotate the wheel so that the top and bottom letters align to match the top and bottom letters in the code above. Then lock the wheel to use the cipher key. Okay, let's crack the code. So we have B in the inside circle. Let's move that. And then we have S in the outside circle. So let's move the outside S to the window. So we have B and S, and here's B and S, they're aligned. So let's lock it so it, it doesn't move by mistake. All right. So now, and the first two are done for us, N and E, so if we go to N, we can see that E lines up. Now we're going to move, we can move L, to the window and the letter C needs to go there. Okay. And the inside letter is A and the letter on the outside is R. We can put it in the put it in the window and we click on it. So far the the message is S-E-C-R. I'm wondering if you're getting an idea of what it is. So we go to N, and there's an E. We put it in the window, and we click on it. Ah, S-E-C-R-E. -E. Okay, let's see. We have C at the end, the last letter. Here's C on the inside circle. And T is the corresponding letter. Put that in the decoder window. Click on it. Secret. Now that seems right. Let's check if we decode, see if we're correct. Awesome. So we have completed the training. And we're going to crack some more codes, okay? They get a little bit harder as we move on. Beginner code breaker. Ready for your first mission? Two letters in the code are, are already aligned for you. Match the top and bottom letters in the wheel to match the top, top and bottom letters in the code. Got it? Are you ready? Here we go. So we know that we have to have G on the inner circle in the window. And we know we have to have A, and A is already there. So I'm going to lock it in place so that things don't move. Okay, so now we have letter I in the inside circle. So let's move letter I. And we see that C and I correspond to each other. Let's click on C. I have not had this word, so this is a new word for me. Okay, so O. I think I know what it is. O and I correspond. A, C, T, I. Do you think you know what it is? I bet you do. Here's U. And O is the corresponding letter. Let's move it to the Dakota window. And click on it. 
A C T I O. I bet you know the last letter. Let's find T. Here it is. And move it in the decoder window. And N. What is this spell? That's correct. Action. Now let's see, though, if that is the correct word that we were supposed to decode. Great job. You cracked the code. Let's try another one. Before we begin, you can go down here to the bottom and you can see the level. We were at the very beginning. Now we're in the beginning of, in the middle of the beginner code breaker level. And we're going to try to get over here to the top levels in the lighter colors. All right. So our first clue is P and I correspond. So let's put P in the bottom part, the inside circle in the decoder window. And then we need I in the top part of the window on the outer circle. Here's I. And let's rotate that in. So we have P and I, just like this. P on the inside, I on the outside. And let's lock it. Don't forget to lock it. I have made the mistake of not locking and things moved and I got the code all wrong. Okay. So, oh, let's move O into the decoder window. And the corresponding letter is H. Wow, this is a new code. All right, L in the lowercase. And the corresponding letter is E. Ah, H-I-E-R, I'm getting an idea of what it is. Okay, V in the lowercase. Let's move that into the decoder window. And the corresponding letter is O. H-I-E-R-O. Do you know what that is? Okay, let's find N on the inner circle. And the corresponding level is G. H-I-E-R-O-G. All right, the next letter in the inside circle is S. Let's move that to the decoder window. And the corresponding letter is L. I, ah, I think I know it. F. F on the inside. Let's move it to the decoder window. And Y. Yeah, I think I'm right. Do you know it too? I bet you do. The next letter is W. Let's move that to the decoder window. W. And there's a P. Mm -hmm. Do you know what the next letter is going to be? So it's an O in the inside circle. Let's rotate that, put it in the decoder window, and then an H. And I know PH makes the sound hieroglyph. Let's see if we're right. All right, we cracked the code. Let's do the next one. So one mistake I made before, and I want to tell you about it, is that I mixed up the inner and the outer circle. The first, well, I made it the first, I made that mistake the first time and the second time, and I didn't realize it. So what I did was put, um, because I saw E first, because it's bigger, so I put E here, and then I saw Y, so then I put Y next, and then I locked it. So then when I went to R, I put R in the big circle again. And I didn't realize that. And I put R in there. I'm like, oh, R and R. Well, that's odd. But I didn't pay, I didn't pay attention to it until I was all the way finished trying to decode. And sometimes I mixed it up. Sometimes I would go the inside circle to, on the bottom like I'm supposed to. And sometimes I would put the outside letter first and it just messed it up. So here we go. I'm making all these mistakes and this code isn't really making any sense to me. So I could stop here 
and just erase and redo the code because I'm thinking I'm not, I made a mistake. And sometimes that happens, right? When you're working through a problem, you realize you made a mistake and you have to start over or you have to back up one or two steps. That's just part of it, right? So I'm going to persevere. I'm going to keep going. I'm not going to give up because I want to, I'm very curious about this code, but I'm sure I made a mistake. So I'm going to erase the letters that I put in and I can just click on them to erase. And I think this was the other letter I found. Now, if they gave you a hint, I gave you a clue, you can't erase it. So I'll click on this to show you. It won't let me erase. Okay. So now I'm going to go back and I'm going to unlock this so I can start over. So let's put Y in the bottom of the decoder window like it's supposed to be. And then put E in the top of the decoder window. So we have E over Y, E over Y. Okay, now I'm going to lock it and let's start again. Let's move R uh, in the bottom of the decoder window. And we see we have the X there. EXP. Hmm. Wonder what we're going to spell. All right. So the next letter on the inside is F. So I'm going to move F from the inside circle to the bottom of the decoder window. And I see the next letter is L. EXPL. I wonder if I have it, if I know it now. So then we have I. Oh, I don't. I, hmm. oh, I'm starting, now I'm getting a different picture. I thought it was going to be something different. I thought it might be the word explain, but now I'm getting a different picture in my mind of what it could be. Yes, especially now if I move the next letter to the bottom of the decoder window and it's an R. I think I know now, right? You do too, don't you? All right, here's Y. Let's move that to the bottom of the decoder window. And there's an E. Yeah, you got it. That's right. Explore. Well, let's see if that's the correct code. All right. So now we completed the beginning level. Good work. Now we're on our way to becoming master code breakers. Let's get some more codes. So we're going to go on to move, move on to be a junior code breaker. Some of these codes have two words and this time only one of the letters in the code is aligned for you. And then after we become junior breakers and we move on to the next level, we'll have none and we'll just have to totally guess. Okay. So here's the clue that we have. O over K. So let's move K into the bottom of the decoder window. And let's move O into the top of the code decoder window. All right, O over K, O over K, and then let's lock it. Don't forget to lock it. Okay. So let's figure out this word. Do you have any ideas? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight letters. Hmm. All right, H. Let's move H in the bottom of the decoder window. And the first letter is L. L-O. Hmm. Let's see. Y. Let's move Y into the bottom of the decoder window. And C becomes the corresponding letter for Y. W. And A. P and T. Ah, I bet you know what that is so far, right? And do you know what it means? All right, here is, see, I almost did it. I almost went to E on the outer circle. And if I would have done that, instead of going with the inner circle, I might not have had the correct letter. So, Let's go back and put E in the bottom like it's supposed to. And the corresponding letter is I. Mm -hmm. I think you know it now. 
there's K, move K to the bottom of the decoder window. The next letter is O, and there's J is next, put that there. And the last letter is N. What does that say? That's right, location. Let's click the code to make sure we're correct. Nice work, you've cracked the code, way to go. Let's try another one. Of course we want to try another one. Okay, one clue. Let's see, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, seven. Wow, it's a long one. It begins with E. In my head, I'm already thinking about words that begin with E that are longer. Longer than explore, right? Because explore isn't that long. All right, let's line up. So we have F. Put F in the window, and then we have to put E in the top of the window. So E over F, just like this, E over F. So that's our cipher. We're going to click to lock it. All right, let's go to the inside circle. Let's figure this puzzle out. Find Y, move it to the bottom of the decoder window. And the next letter is X. So in my head, I'm thinking, what words do I know that begin with E and X? X. Okay. And when I do that, I start to get my brain ready to try to solve this puzzle. All right. The next letter on the inside is Q. Let's move Q to the bottom. There's P. Hmm. EXP. So I'm thinking expect, explore. I'm thinking of all these words that I know of. They begin that way. So F is the bottom letter. Let's move that to the bottom of the decoder window. There's E. EXP. Ah. Okay, I'm thinking of other words that begin with EXP now that I have the fourth letter. Let's move the next. This S to the bottom of the decoder. Hmm. That's not what I thought it was. I was thinking expedition. That's okay. Now I know there's an R, so I'm going to keep trying. I'm trying to figure it out before I move all the letters. All right, J. Let's get J down at the bottom. It's I. Let's get N in the bottom. N. Ah, now I'm forming a new word in my head. But I, the thinking I did about what I thought those words, that word might be, helped my brain. And it got me closer to the answer. So we're just going to move on to see if I'm right. I think I am. And every letter is starting to confirm it for me. Yes, and the last letter is U, and the corresponding letter is T. Experiment. All right, you got that too, didn't you? Very good. Let's move on. Let's see. Nice work. Let's try another one, of course. I want you to notice how we're moving in our level. We're moving to the lighter colors. Ah, we have two words this time. One clue. O over W. So W on the inside. There you are. Move you over. And O on the top. O over W. Let's lock it so it doesn't move on us. Okay, Z. R. Hmm. R O. Okay, here's K. Let's move that to the bottom of the decoder window and corresponding. Wow. You're probably thinking what I'm thinking. Is the next letter K? Let's see. S. Ah. So in my head, I'm thinking of words that go with rock, like rock star, rock star, supernova. Okay? So you just get your mind thinking, and that's what code breakers do. They just take out the information that they know and try to add more information to it. They get their brain ready for more learning. Okay. K on the inside. Ah, C, rock, C, T, 
Hmm. Rock cleaning. Okay, this one. Key over. Hmm. Marine over. Rock. Ah, rock climate. Climate? Hmm. Let's see. J. Ah, I know that word, rock climb. So let's see what the last three letters are. Q. Oh, we know Q. We've already used Q before. Ah, right. Hmm. V. O. Rock climbing. I didn't know if it was going to be rock climbers. Rock. Yes, very good. Rock climbing. Okay, let's check it to see if that's correct. We completed another level. Okay, so now we're moving on to some tougher ones. Advanced code breaker. Now you're on your own with no clues. See if you can decipher these words that are connected to the book series. Explorer Academy. Hint, correct letters will stay up even if the code is wrong. Think about common letters to try. So I have not read the series at all. So we're just going to, we're going to have to do some guess and check, right? So let's see. We know these letters are going to be in the inside circle. So let's start with putting J on the inside. Hmm. What do we want to equal J? What do you want to try? I don't know. Common letters, S and T, lots of words begin with S, T, and M, and R. I don't know. I'm going to try T. <laughs> so T over J. So we're going to see if... if if it works so, so let's lock it if it doesn't work no big deal we just try again because that's what perseverance is all about and that's what code breakers do they try something out they they put their mind they make a decision about trying something and if it works great if it doesn't they start again okay let's see if this works t so then we move v Uh oh, I forgot to lock, didn't I? And do you see how then I would end up with another T because I forgot to lock? Ah, so lesson learned, right? No big deal. I'm just going to put J back in there and make sure I lock it. Okay, I'm gonna lock it. There we go. Now I can move V. Hmm, TF. Right away, I'm thinking this is suspicious, like it might not quite make sense. So, but I'll try, I'll keep going, let's see. Here's K, there's a U, T, F, U, hmm. That doesn't really make sense to me. I'll try one more letter and let's we'll see. Yeah. That doesn't really make sense to me when I look at it. It doesn't form a word that I know of. So if I hit the code, ah, uh, so close. Looks like you've matched the wrong letters. Okay, so we're going to try again. When you do that, it erases it for you. And it unlocks so that, or you have to unlock it so that you can move things and try again. Well, hmm. Let's put J back there in the bottom of the decoder window. Hmm, what are some letters, some words that have four letters and maybe they have something to do with exploring. Uh, maybe, hmm. Some, when I think about all the words in the dictionary that I know of and what words what letters have a lot of words? I don't know. I'm going to try C. 
Let's give it a try. Who knows? Okay, let's lock it. Put C up there. Now V. V is O. C O. So far, lots of possibilities, right? K. Oh, no way. <laughs> no, that's making sense to me. I think I know. If I did it right, I think I know what this is. L is E. Oh, my goodness. That does make sense. I was going for the word cave because you explore in a cave. But let's see if we're right with the code. All right, we cracked the code on this one. All right. So that's how you play it. The next letter, next word only has three letters. And if we put Y in the bottom, what letter? I don't know. A three letter word when you're exploring, maybe ice. I'm going to give it a try. I'm going to put I in the top. You just never know, right? And I'll lock it. So I put I up there. S. It was nice of them to give us that clue. Oh, no. Don't tell me. I, I promise you, I have not gone this far, and I have not seen this word before when I've played. Now, that does make sense. I'm wondering, if, am I right that it is ice? Oh, goodness. Let's see. M. Let's move M over here. Oh, I don't think I'm right. I see W. So that doesn't make sense to me. So I'm going to start over. Instead of hitting the decode button to see if I'm correct, I'm just going to erase the letters by clicking on them. Clicking on them. And so I've cleared them. And I'm going to put Y back in the bottom of the decoder window. And I'm going to try another letter for the top. I could equal, maybe I equals M. So I'll put M over there. Okay. And on a piece of paper, you could try, you could write down the letters that you've tried to see if they make sense. And it kind of is a guess and check. And you also have to work with what you know or what you think you know about the subject and about the words and the length of the words to see if you're right. So it really is guess and check. Excuse me. So you can try it. <coughs> Excuse me. And then you would move S. MC. Hmm. I don't know. I don't know. I know words that begin with MC. They're usually names like McMahon, McManus, McClowski. So this doesn't seem right to me. Now I could go through and do the next letter. But I think I'm just going to erase and start over. And that's okay. It's about perseverance, being very dedicated to figuring this out. And if you're very curious like me and you've just got to know, you just keep playing. OK, so that's how you play this game. And you can see that we're in the middle of Advanced Code Breaker and we still have a little ways to go. So and also know that when you play, you'll get different words each time because all of these words, except for one, were new to me this time in my fifth time playing. OK, I hope that you will enjoy that game and that you'll find it lots of fun. And I also want to encourage you to read those books that I mentioned and that were in our Google Slides. Be curious and keep reading. Thanks for joining me. Have a fabulous day.